welcome back. This is Daywalker Customs. And today we're going to be making this um, really cute dress. It's called the Suzy Q Dress. It's by Sophia and Friends and it's pattern 1673 from them. You can get it in multiple sizes, um, a specific size or all sizes. Uh, we're going to make dress A in today's video. Before we get started, we're going to go through sizing and how to pick the correct pattern for your dog. Uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to measure. So you're going to measure the neck, the girth, the body, and the length. In particular, the neck, the girth, and the length. Those are the three key areas that you need to know with the size of your animal. Um, and then once you have those sizes, measured and I usually for the neck I usually put a finger in there because I don't want it to be too tight then you go to this chart here which is on uh, the usually the second page in her pattern and based on the body measurements it will tell you what size pattern you need and for my Lily she has an 8 inch neck a 12 inch girth and about a 14 inch length so she fits right in here with the small sizes um, so you measure and then you find out which size pattern is going to uh, fit the best. But let's say that, for example, that pattern was close, but she was a little bit bigger in the girth or a little bit smaller in the girth. And I needed to make some adjustments in the pattern. This page talks about how to do your adjustments in the pattern for the overall uh, neck uh, and girth area and for the, the length area. So, um, for example, if we were to take the uh, chest and body pieces and we wanted to make them wider because the girth was wider, we could add a piece of paper. I would tape a piece of paper on both sides and then if I wanted to make it one inch, I would cut a half inch here and a half inch there and that would increase the size of my pattern by one inch. You would do that in both the body and the chest for this particular pattern. Some it's just the body, some it's um, other pieces like in this case. For the length, let's say that I wanted to increase the length. I could then cut apart on the dotted line here, put a piece of paper in the middle to make it longer. And I could do this in the this area here, but I could also do it on the ruffle. So I might say, okay, I want two inches and also I'll add an inch to this and then I'll add an inch to this. That would give me my two inches in length and make the body a little bit longer before the ruffle starts. But it really depends on how you want it to look and how you want it to fit. I've had good success with making these changes to my patterns before cutting them out. Um, I've done French Bulldogs and um, Pugs, which are notoriously have a larger neck and girth but they're short body wise so I've had to increase the the width here uh, to make the body bigger and then decrease so take this up cut this line across and pull it up and tape it above the line so that I decrease the size of the length of the pattern and then on this just folded it over and decrease the size that way so that's how I've been able to change the patterns and make them work really well. So let's get started. First thing you're going to do is print off your pattern pieces. And when you go to print your pattern pieces, make sure you print them in actual size. Don't let your printer change it to fit to scale or fit to page or anything like that. You're going to want to print these in actual size and then some of them like this one prints in two separate pieces and then you match up the square um, dotted line and tape those together to make your one pattern piece so once you have your pattern pieces made you're going to follow there's a, a layout plan in the in the pattern or you can look on the pattern itself and it says tells you what fabric you could cut from. It also tells you how many. This one is cut one on the fold and the fold is over here. So I'm going to lay it on my fabric and this is actually the fabric I used here. Okay, so I'm going to lay it on my fabric and I'm going to lay it on the fold. Let's see, I'm almost out of this fabric so I can barely show this here. But you would lay it on the fold and then cut it out. 
Um, this particular uh, pattern or, or any pattern, I have two ways of doing it. Sometimes I will pin it on and cut it out with scissors. Other times I will just lay it on and cut it with my rotary cutter. It kind of depends on how um, varied the angles are. Like on this one, I had trouble with this in here. So it was easier to pin it onto the fabric and then cut it with scissors than it was to cut it with the rotary cutter. All in what you're comfortable doing. But once you have them all cut out, then you um, can leave them with the pattern so you know which one is which. This one happens to be my collar, which was cut one. This one happens to be the um, arm band. And I need to cut two. And I will show you how to do that because I only cut one here. This one was the arm ruffle, cut two on the fold, which I have. This is my chest piece. And this is my chest band. My body piece, which was cut on the fold. And my ruffle, which was cut on the fold. So I have all my pieces cut with the exception of this one piece, which I was gonna show you how I cut that. So I have one of the pieces cut and I need to cut two. So I'm gonna use my fabric here. As I said, I'm almost out of this fabric. I had used it for other things. So there's not much left. Let's see, I want it to go the same direction. So I'm gonna go this way. It happens to be directional fabric as well. So I need to make sure I'm going in the right direction here. So I'm gonna lay this onto my fabric and I'm gonna pin it. A lot of times, if you, especially if you're not real used to rotary cutting or you just aren't comfortable with cutting, um, you can use rulers, you can use um, different tools to help you feel more comfortable. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna use a rotary cutter, but I pinned it on to keep it from moving. So I'm just gonna cut along that edge, careful not to cut my pattern. And I did cut it a little bit anyway. Sliver off of it. There we go. Put that over there. So now I have my two of these and I'm gonna put them together with my pattern so I remember which piece is which. So when I go through this, I know which pieces I have and they're ready to go. Okay, so we've got our pattern pieces cut. We've talked about, um, we've talked about how to size. Um, and so we're gonna dive right into actually making the pattern and I'm gonna follow her instructions here pretty much with about one exception that I found makes things a little bit easier on putting some of the sleeves in. Um, but before we get started, I want to talk about a little bit about the tools that I have. There's not too much other than just regular, you know, scissors, um, the rotary cutter, pins, um, and then your fabric and your sewing machine. There's really not too many other tools. The one other tool is a marking pen, and this is a heat erase marking pen that you can use to mark dots or uh, such on your fabrics like here. This is a there's a dot here um, that I would want to mark on my fabric um, So that's that's for that and then it comes right off with the iron okay, So the first thing that it has you do is connect Well, actually before we get started one of the things that it has you do on knit materials and this pattern is for knit I tried to make it in a cotton and it did not work well because it doesn't stretch enough around the neck uh, to be able to get it onto my dog. So one of the things that it recommends doing for your knit fabric is to sew around the edges. And I don't know if you can see this, I'll try and zoom in here. Um, but this is basically, I put a, a zigzag stitch that went around the edges um, of the fabric. It helps keep it from um, fraying, but also gives it a little bit of stability around the edge um, of the fabric. So you'd wanna do that. 
at least on your body and on your chest, which is what I did. Um, I'm not going to do it on some of the other pieces, but those pieces I did do it on, on my body and my chest. So the first thing that it has you do, the first step is to attach your body and your chest together. We'll leave those pattern pieces aside because we're going to need them um, by the shoulder straps. So here are my shoulder straps and I'm just going to pin these in place. I'll use a couple of pins to hold these. And you're going to want to make sure you're sewing at about a quarter of an inch seam. So in my case, I'm using the edge of my foot as my guide. And then I moved my needle over uh, so that when I got, um, when I sew, I get a quarter of an inch. And you can test that on your sewing machine. Um, just use a scrap piece of material and you can test it to make sure. Uh, but I need to move mine over. Okay, and then we're just going to sew a regular straight stitch um, and it's about 2.5 in length. And you're going to want to make sure you backspace or backstitch. Okay, and then my other side here. Stitch. Okay, so that was step number one is to put our shoulder seams together between the body and the chest pieces. Now we're going to take our chest band which is this one right here. And we're going to take that and we're going to fold it in half with our wrong sides together. So it comes out like this. And I'm going to take this to my iron and press it real quick. Okay, so I've pressed this to kind of hold that in half. And so now we're going to attach this to the wrong side of our chest piece. And it's a little bit shorter than our chest piece is, so we're going to actually stretch it. So we're going to pin one end, and again, this is the raw edge of this band with the raw edge of the wrong side of our chest piece. So we're going to pin each of the ends first. And then as you can see, it, the body, it, the chest piece is a little bit bigger than the band. So we're gonna actually just kind of stretch that out and pin that. So I'm gonna stretch it and kind of pin in the middle. And while I'm still kind of stretching it out here, I'm gonna pin in the middle in the quarters here and then here to kind of hold it and pin as much as you need to pin to hold it because otherwise you'll end up with really big puckers. So if you need to pin um, eighths or you know even more, if you still see you got a lot of puckers in there or a lot of um, stretching needs to happen, put another pin in. Just make sure you have enough pins in to keep it from um, puckering on the other side. And then we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch there. sure to backstitch. And then trim your threads here. And then we're going to remove our pins. And we're going to trim this seam. 
Um, and we want to trim the seam probably about halfway between where the edge of the seam is and where we just sewed. It's kind of hard to see because of this white thread on this light material, but just kind of know that I'm cutting about halfway in between where I sewed and the edge of my fabric. So I'm cutting off about an eighth of an inch of material. And that's because our next step, we're actually going to take this and fold this over to the right side like this to kind of do a finished edge. So that gives us kind of a finished edge here and a finished edge here. Okay, so we're going to want to pin that in place. So you kind of turn it with your fingers until you get kind of that edge. So it's going to cover, you're going to leave the seam on one side, kind of underneath, and then pull this over. It gives you kind of just a little finished um, flap there. And if it's easier, you can take this to your iron and press this down. Um, that might be easier to help with the, uh, the actual fold. But just go along this whole piece here and just keep turning and pinning. Till you get to the other end. And now we're going to actually top stitch, which is going to be about a quarter, no, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So now that I have this pinned down, you can kind of see how that's going to look. And I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch from this folded edge here to kind of secure that down and pin that down. You can see what it looks like on the other side too as well. So I'm going to take that over and I'm going to do about an eighth of an inch. So pretty close to that fold, but not right on it. I'm going to give it a little bit of room there. But I'm pretty close to the edge of that fold. And it's slipping on me a little bit there. Okay, so then I'm going to take out my pins and now I have a nice finished seam along my um, chest piece here that will go along the chest piece. The next part is going to be finishing off the dress ruffle itself. Um, and what it wants us to do for the bottom, along the bottom edge here, is what they call a uh, lettuce edge, okay? And it's kind of, um, it's kind of a ruffly edge and it's done with a zigzag. Um, we're going to practice that because I'm not really good at it, so I'm going to kind of show you how I, how I did it. Um, and then uh, hopefully you'll be able to practice with yours as well. So we want to set our stitch length, um, the zigzag, for about a 4 in width, 4.0 millimeters in width, and our length really short. We only want our length to be about 1.0. So about 4 in length, in width, and about 1 in length. And then, then we're going to grab hold of this and we're going to stretch the material on each end. So I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to sew right about that quarter of an inch edge so that it's, it's going to be right on the edge of my material. But I'm going to sew it and I'm going to stretch my material both front and back as I'm stitching here. And this might take some practice. I know it does for me. I'm 
Mine is actually like folding over the edge of it too. So it's kind of, kind of almost like an overlock stitch. But I am stretching as I go. It's kind of like going off the edge of the material. Okay, let's take a look at this and see how this looks. Okay, so you can kind of see what it did here. Um, as it was sewing, it was coming off the edge, so it kind of finishes the edge, but it gives it this kind of a ruffly or lettuce -y edge look to it. So it's kind of cute. Um, so it kind of finishes that edge off a little bit, but also um, gives it that little bit of um, dips and, and curves in, in the edge of that fabric. So we're going to do that. That's going to be our goal. And we're going to do that on the whole length, the rounded side, not the top side, but the rounded side of our um, ruffle for the dress ruffle. Okay. So we're going to do that. I'm going to start up here in the corner and again I'm going to get started kind of slow because I know it's going to take me a little bit to get my material where I can kind of start stretching it on the back side. I can pull it and kind of stretch it on the front. There we go. Now I got a hold of a piece here. Okay, so I finished my piece, and isn't that cute? How that lays out there. Look at that. It's got a little, like a little, it's cute. Look at that little lacy edge almost on that piece. So it's kind of cute. So that was fun. And you can, um, you can do different edging if you want, um, but this is the one that it calls for here is this lettuce edge, which is kind of cute. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to put our gathering stitches in. And gathering stitches are straight stitches, so take your machine back to a straight stitch. And you'll want to increase your length again to, um, this time you're going to go as, as wide as you can go. Mine will only go to five. But if you have six or, or more on your machine, definitely take it to as long a stitch as you can. Your width should be zero um, and your stitch length should be long. And at this end, you're going to put your foot down and you're actually going to take some back spaces at the beginning because you want that to hold in place. You don't want it to stretch on that end. And then without stretching your material, just simply sew across it with your long stitch. Try not to stretch the material at all. And then when you get to the end, don't cut off your strings, okay? Pull it out and give yourself a little bit of string because you're going to need that to pull your ruffle and you can see it already kind of ruffled on its own a little bit but you're definitely going to have to pull it and make more. The size of a gathered ruffle that you're going to need is going to be the size of the body. Okay so let's pull the body back out here. So it's going to be this size of the body from the seam point to the seam point. So you're gonna want it to be that long from here to here. And you're gonna, that's how long you're gonna want it to be. So we're gonna have to gather quite a bit here, not an awful lot, but some. 
So let's just do some gathering first. Make sure you slide those gathers all the way to the other end so it's even. So I'm hanging on to one thread and I'm just kind of pulling uh, uh, carefully on the fabric to kind of put the gathers in place. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to break that thread or you'll have to put another thread in to gather again. And then once you get some of the gathering in place, kind of straighten it out so that it's even across. And then let's check it to see if it's going to be the right size. So I'm going to check this just by laying it down and kind of pulling this across and kind of just checking the length to see if I'm close. And remarkably, I am pretty close. I'm only about a little bit off. So I need to gather just a little bit more. Probably could do it right on this end. Okay. And then we're gonna wanna pin this together. So we've got the body here, and I've got this laid out here, and I'm going to put right sides together to pin my ruffle on, okay? Don't clip your threads just yet because you might have to adjust it a little bit after you get it on. But I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna pin not at the seam allowance, but just inside that seam allowance. So I've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm starting to pin just inside of that. That's where the dot is. So I'm gonna pin this all the way across to the other side where my other dot is. And if you're wondering why the dot that I am referring to, if you look on the pattern piece, let me put this pin in and I'll show you real quick here. If you look on the body pattern piece, it's referring to this dot here and that's at the seam line. So we're gonna just continue to pin this on going across. Okay, now this time, this particular seam is going to be 3 8 so it's going to be a little bit more than the quarter inch. Um, and if you, like me, you basted at a quarter of an inch, it's going to be just inside of that stitching that you basted. And that'll help to hide the basting stitch as well. So we're going to start on this end. Make sure to take your stitch length back down to 2.5, which I did not do. And then reverse. And we're gonna stitch across at 3 eighths. And take your time so that you don't pucker this too badly. You wanna keep those um, gathers kind of straightened out as you're going. You don't want them sideways. You want them to be straightened out. So you want to keep them as straight as you can going across here. Now that you have it sewed on, you can trim your gathering threads over here. You won't need all of those now that it's sewed on, so you can trim those off. And take out your pins. Okay, and then let's turn this over and see how this looks. That's that cute? That is so cute. Okay, looks like another thread down here to trim. Okay, so now the top stitching here is optional. 
Um, but I would go ahead and do it because it, it just helps this lay flatter on the um, skirt itself. So you can, what we'll do is we'll just stitch um, an eighth of an inch or right on, practically right on that seam where it comes together, where it's folded over, where the body folds onto the actual skirt. We're gonna sew that. And like I said, it, you're almost right on top of that seam, um, not even probably an eighth of an inch away from it. You're just gonna top stitch right on top. So take it nice and slow because you wanna stay along that edge. And you also wanna make sure that you've pulled the material out so that the seam is laying on the body side and you've pulled that material out so that it's gonna be, um, you're gonna catch it underneath with your top stitching. Sure you keep your little chest piece out of the way. You're not going to want to stitch that in. And then again, I'm going right along the edge of that fold where it meets the skirt to top stitch that down. Okay, so you can kind of see how that top stitching kind of helps to hold that down in place and it kind of gives it more of a finished edge. So you can see the top stitching there. There's my threads. Okay, and I do like the top stitching. I like the look of it. Um, I think that it, um, it gives it a finished kind of edge there, which is really cute. It's coming along cute. Okay, so this is where I'm going to vary from the pattern. And the pattern actually has you stitch your side seams together at this point. But then I find that it's really difficult to work with the arm sections to do the uh, ruffle and to do the casing around the arm. So we're not going to sew our side seams just yet. Um, we're going to leave those open and it'll make it easier for us to sew along this straighter edge than it will be to sew in a circle. At least it was for me. So you can do it the other way if you'd like. Uh, this just happens to work better for me is to not sew the side seam at this point. So we're gonna take the next step, which is to prepare our ruffles. So you wanna get your ruffle pieces and there are two of them. And we're gonna do the same thing with the ruffle that we did with the skirt. The rounded side, we're gonna do that zigzag lattice look again, um, lettuce look again, the lettuce edge again on there. And then we're going to put in our um, gathering stitches, the long gathering stitches, and we're gonna do that on both of these. So be sure to change your stitch length back to a, five, a four wide and a one in length. And then we're just gonna start right along this edge. So there's one of them and I'm going to do that with both and then I'm going to put in the gathering stitches and so I'm going to go ahead and um, pause this and then I'll come back as soon as I get these two ready. Okay so I have finished with my lettuce edge 
and I have put my gathering stitches in. So now I'm ready to pull this and to gather this up, cross this, and for this particular one, we're going to go from the side seam up around the shoulder seam to a point on our chest piece. So actually, before we do that, let's mark that. Okay, so we're going to be going from, again, from the side seam here. This would be our side seam. We're going to go up past the shoulder seam and onto a point on our chest piece. And that chest piece, if I lay this down on here, okay, it's going to go to this dot right here. So I'm going to use my marking pencil to draw a line right there so I know exactly where I need to go. That's where I'm going to stop. So I'm going to go all the way from here to here and that's where my ruffle is going to get placed. So as I'm creating my ruffles I need to make sure that I am gathering them enough that they'll be small enough to go in that spot. So I'm just going to pull gently on my string, pull my gathering stitches down. And this is kind of a rough little piece to do because it's smaller than the skirt was. So you just have to kind of work it little by little to pull it down. Once I have a gather going, sometimes I'll just hold on to it this way and kind of pull it to the other end. But you want to keep pulling those gathers down to the other side. And then when you think you're getting close to the size that you're going to need, you can always lay it down and kind of measure it. So let's see how we are, if our gathers are enough here. Okay, so I know I'm going to this point right here. And my gather is going to go like this. So if I started at this point, and I laid this down, cross here, cross there, over that seam, and then down to my edge here. How close am I? I've actually gathered a little bit too much, so let me pull out the gather a little bit. So you're going to pull that down a little bit and then make sure that I pull my other gathers even so that they're going to be even across this. Now let's check it again. From there, crossed and down to my mark. And I took a little too much out. Put a little bit back in. Okay, that should be close. All right, so I'm going to lay this down from this edge here, and I'm going to start pinning this on. Okay, and then we're going to do the same exact thing with the other side. So we want to get that pinned on like that. We're going to go to the other side and do the same thing with the other ruffle. Let's mark our center point on the chest piece. This time I have to fold it this way because this is how it flows. And I want it to come to about right here. This is where my dot is. Now I've marked that. And so we're going to, again, we're going to pull the thread carefully.
And I'm not going to make you guys watch me do the, all this gathering and pinning it on. You've seen me do the first one. So I'm going to pause this and I will be back when I get it attached. Okay, now that I have the um, ruffles pinned onto my um, arms, now I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to sew this at a quarter of an inch. So make sure that you take your stitch length back down to 2.5 and zero on the width. So we're going to do a straight stitch here. And you're going to want to make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Hold that ruffle nice and straight as you're sewing across. trim off the threads from the gathering stitches as well as you won't need those anymore. And you can check that out to see how cute that looks. Look at that little ruffle. Isn't that adorable? There on the arm. That looks so cute. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and sew the other side. Again, you want to make sure that you keep the ruffle straight as you're going across. So now we've attached both of our ruffles to our arm pieces and they are looking adorable. Okay, at this point we're going to be working on the collar piece as well as the two arm band pieces. So you'll want to get those out. We're going to do the same thing with all of them. Um, well, one exception. Um, the, we're going to put the collar piece aside for a minute and just work with the two arm bands first. Uh, what we want to do is take them to the iron and fold them wrong side together and iron them across like this. Okay, so we're going to do that and actually we're going to iron the, the collar one the same way. Fold it in half, uh, wrong sides together, and then press that. Okay, on the arm pieces, we're going to be pinning these onto the right side of the fabric, but the wrong, or the right side of the body, but the wrong side of our ruffle, because we want our ruffle to be sandwiched in between the body and this arm casing. So we're going to start here at the corner and we're going to put it in place here. And then we're going to go to the other corner because this thing is shorter than the distance we're going to go. So we're going to go all the way to the other corner, not where we stopped with the stitching, but all the way to the other side seam. So that's all the way down here. So you're going to go a little bit beyond where the ruffle is. And as you can see, we have more of the body than we do of this. So we're going to have to stretch this in order to make it work all the way across. So we're going to stretch this out and we're going to go to the center. So pull this into the center. 
and we're going to work our way in in uh, halves of each section so a half of the whole and then we're going to stretch again and go half of this half into a quarter and pin there And then we're going to stretch this and pin in the eighth here. And that's probably about as far as we need to stretch. That's used, that's looking pretty good. And again, that's the wrong side of the ruffle and the right side of your body is up here. And then the raw edges are together. And then back to this side where I'm going to stretch this a little bit and go right to the middle. We're going to do the same thing on the other side and isn't this easier than trying to do it in a circle um, for me it just seemed like it's so much easier and then i can put my side seams together once i'm done with this but um, it just seemed like an easier way for me to do it so that's kind of how i'm doing my video all right now we want to go to the other side here take this and we're going to stretch it from this side seam here all the way to the other side seam. Make sure you don't get it twisted. Okay, so now I've finished pinning this, I'm going to take this to the machine and sew my quarter of an inch along that edge there. you don't really want to stretch the material either because you've already kind of stretched it. sew the other side down. have finished adding the casing to each of the arm sleeves here and so that's how that kind of looks as that comes over and then this is the casing that's kind of underneath of that and so now we're going to put our side seams together so fold this over and it's going to be this side seam and this side seam over here we're going to sew these together now and this is again where I varied she had us doing the side seams earlier um, but I just found it was easier to put my ruffle and my casing on my arm sleeves <clears throat> this way so now I'm going to pin these together making sure I meet 
the edge here um, so that they're even along this part right here. And that sticks out just about a seam allowance from where the skirt starts. So which is about where we put that point. And then I'm going to make sure they're even up here. And put an extra pin in the middle to hold it. And I'm going to do that to both sides here. Pinning at the bottom, making sure those are even. And if you have to stretch it just a little bit to get them to come even, that's fine. And I'm going to want to make sure I'm at 2.5 in length of my stitch. We can uh, take our pins out and thus our, our side seams are now sewn together. So let's turn that inside out and see how that looks. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Look at that little outfit. Is that not adorable or what? Okay, so we have our little ruffles on and we have our little casings in there. So and you can um, optionally top stitch if you want along here. Um, I'm not going to do it in this case because I think it's laying pretty well. I would normally pop top stitch, but I think it's laying out pretty well actually the way the ruffle is laying out. So I'm not going to do that. So, um, and it looks like I got a little bit of a pucker here I'm going to have to take out. You notice this is um, how it kind of caught this piece of material underneath there. Uh, so I will have to take that out. Um, I'll do that off camera. And then this is the back of the little dress here. And you see how the casing kind of comes down? So, now this is the other thing. If you have some stitches, like here, okay, where I have, actually, I didn't come in far enough. I'm going to have to put that casing in there better. So there's another little ooch I've got to fix, but I don't know, I'd rather show these on video than, you know, act like everything goes fine. Um, so I will fix this little spot. And then if there are gathering stitches, sometimes there's gathering stitches that will show, you can pull those out, your little gathering stitches. Uh, it looks like this arm is pretty good. Yeah, it looks like I got my gathering stitches covered in pretty well. If you went just inside the gathering stitches, you won't see those anyway. So but there's a couple of little things that I'm going to fix and then um, we'll be back to do the collar next. To be aware, this is the piece that I didn't quite catch enough of the body material onto the casing here around the arm. So I removed the stitching here and pulled this back up so that it is even with the raw edges again and then I'm going to stitch across that. That's how I will fix that. Um, and just wanted to show you on video. Okay, so the last part of this is to attach the collar uh, to the neck here. And for this particular one, we're going to fold this over like this so that the short ends are together. And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam across those short ends. Okay, and since we already ironed this on the fold, when we turn this over, turn it out, 
they, we should be able to just fold it right onto that fold that we ironed. So it's going to end up looking like this. So you're going to have your two raw edges coming together like this, and then you'll have a fold here. So this will be wrong sides together and that's how you want to fold it. So we're going to start with the seam where the seam comes together. This we're going to put on the, on the chest side, on the belly side. Okay. And this is actually going to end up with the neck inside of this loop. So we're going to pull this, see if you can see this on the camera. Here's my chest. I'm going to find the middle of the chest, which is about right here. Put the seam right on the middle. Let me put that pin in place first. Okay. And then I'm going to pull the collar up inside of the collar cuff, the, the actual collar of the body and the chest. And I'm pulling it up inside of this collar casing. Okay. And the collar casing is smaller than the body. So we're going to have to stretch the collar casing to meet the size of that body and chest piece. So I'm going to stretch it out and I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to pin the front center. And then I'm going to pull it again, just like we did with the arm casings, only this time we're doing it in a circle. I'm going to kind of pull, stretch that casing so that it matches the body. And I'm going to pin in the center. Again, I'm kind of dividing it into halves and quarters and eighths. Okay. And then once you get to about the eighth, you're probably about as stretch as you need to be, but use as many pins as you need to, to hold that in place. That was one of my problems with the arm casing is I don't think I had enough pins in it because it slipped and I had to go back and fix one of the seams. So just make sure that you have, you're stretching that, going to the middle, picking that up, making sure your raw edges are meeting up all the way around. I think I'll put a couple of pins in here. Okay. Now that I have this pinned on all the way around, I'm going to put one more pin here. Looks like it's gapping a little bit. Make sure you have plenty. It doesn't hurt to have the pins to hold it in place. I see a little bit of gapping going on. Okay. So now that I have this pinned in place, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around. And this one, you kind of have to finagle those uh, pins a little bit. And I'm actually going to sew from the inside. I'm not going to sew from the outside. It's easier for me to get my pins in there and to be able to move that around. So I'm actually going to sew from the inside. So I'm kind of holding this top portion out of the way, not too much to stretch what I'm sewing on. Make sure to back stitch. And you're going to just go a little ways and then you're going to kind of turn this um, so that you can continue sewing. And you can pull out your pins as you're going. Whereas I sewed over my pins before, I'm kind of pulling them out because it helps to keep them out of the way as I'm turning this. It gives me a little more, because the pins can kind of get in the way here if you're, when you, as you're pulling this around, they can kind of get in your way. So if you pull them out 
as you go, there's less of them to get in the way. Plus it also lets you know where you started and stopped. So I'm just gonna sew a little at a time. sure you don't get any puckers in there. And then you just kind of turn this like this and you've got your little collar in place. And see, I've got a couple little puckers there, but they, they look more like gathers. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. And you've got your little ruffles on. This is what it looks like from the back. So we've got our edge here, our ruffles and our casings. And the collar on. Now the only thing that's left to do is to put our bow right here on the middle. So we're going to go, we're going to get a bow and make up our bow. Or if you have a, um, you know, factory made bow or something that you bought at Joann's or Hobby Lobby or something, you can put that on there, but I'm going to actually make a bow. And so I'll be right back. Okay. To make this bow, I'm actually going to use this bow dabra. Um, tool that I've got uh, to make the bow with and I'm going to put my piece of I cut a piece of the um, it's kind of a wire cord that comes with the with the bow dabra just going to kind of tuck that underneath so it keeps that out of the way and then here's my ribbon this is just half inch uh, silk ribbon not silk but ribbon from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to give myself plenty of tail pull that down in here. And then the nice thing about this is it actually has a measure on both sides. So I can decide about how big I want my bow to be. And I'm actually going to do about a two inch bow. So I'm going to flip this over, kind of turn this so you guys can see this a little bit better. So I'm going to flip this over at the two inch mark, bring it back through and down and then get the tail out of the way. And then I'm going to do two inches on this side flip it back through. I'm actually going to make a double bow. So this would be if I was going to make a single bow, I could just pull my string up and tie it there now, but I'm actually going to make a double bow. So this one's going to go back out to two inches and pull back across. And then two more inches here and pull back across and then kind of bring my tail down where I want my tail to be. And I'm going to clip off a little bit more than I need. And then I'll pull my string up or my wire, string wire air in the middle and tie that off. I'm going to give that a couple, two, three good ties so it'll keep it together. Okay, and then I can pull my bow out. And so there's my little bow and I can trim off the wire because I don't need the excess on there. The cording wire. OK, 
Okay, so there's that. And then I kind of want to hide this little gold piece in the middle. Um, and I could put a button on it. You could uh, definitely put a little button on it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, cut another piece of this pink ribbon and kind of wrap it around it. So I'm going to wrap this from the front, actually from the back, and I'm going to wrap it around. I'll kind of show you what I'm going to do here. Wrap it back around to this side so it gives me kind of that finished edge. Okay, and I'm actually going to use a hot glue gun to um, glue this part in place, and then we're going to hand sew it onto uh, the dress. Now that our bow is made, we're actually going to sew this on to the front of the dress. So find your midpoint um, where it's going to go. And I'm actually going to just hand sew this on. If you had a button, you could sew the button on there too. Um, so I'm just got a needle and thread here. And I'm going to put that in right there. I'm actually going to pin this in place so it doesn't slip on me. Okay, now that I have it pinned in place, I'm going to just take a few stitches to tack this to the dress. And I'm going to do this from underneath and come up and do it from behind because I don't want the stitches to show through the bow on the front. And I've got hot glue in there, so it's making it a little difficult to get a hold of the ribbon, just a part of the ribbon, an edge of it. As I'm going across here, I'm just getting just a little bit of the dress material and a little bit of the ribbon just to kind of tack it down and hold it in place. And I think I'll go back the other direction and just uh, tack a few more stitches down. Just kind of hold it on this side and then I will make a knot by making a loop here and putting my needle through that loop. And I will do three knots right here in the same spot that I've uh, been stitching. Three is just the number that I tend to choose. Uh, you could do two stitches, you could do four, but three is just kind of the one that I use the most. And there's my little bow on my dress. So now the only last thing to do is to cut these tails um, and you'll want to cut them to the length that's not going to be too long here. And I like to stagger them a little bit. So I'm going to cut this one kind of like this and I'm going to cut this one a little bit longer about like that. And there is our little dress. Is that not adorable? This is the Suzy Q dress from Sophie and Friends. And here's the back. Is that not cute? That came out really cute. And again, this is uh, Daywalker Customs. Thanks for joining me. Um, please check out my other videos and there are links here at the top of the page. I appreciate your um, joining us and viewing with us today. And you guys have a great day. Thanks.